Well, good morning. Uh, today's part two in our series on prayer, but there's a context for us as a nation in the, in the UK uh, that we've just lost our longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. And she served through a series of crises, both family crises, national crises, economic crises, cold war, sewers, all sorts of different things that, that happened during her reign. Uh, but she served with like faithfulness, integrity, uh, and was something of a kind of a, a rock of reference, a kind of like reference point for us uh, as a nation during that time. And I believe that was down to her Christian faith. Uh, her first uh, Christmas broadcast, she asked the nation to pray for her. And prayer is powerful. Uh, and so today, part two, we're going to be talking about listening to God in prayer. Listening to God in prayer. That's kind of the heading. But there's a subtitle to it that I really want us to take hold of. And the subtitle is How to Never Be Disappointed in Prayer. And I believe a lot of us as Christians, we get really disappointed with prayer because we've misunderstood the goal of prayer. So go with me again to Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. We're going to read those first two verses, verses 1 and 2 again. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version today. And I want us to understand how to listen to God and how to avoid disappointment in and from prayer. Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Let's read it. It says this. Now it came to pass, as Jesus was praying in a certain place, that when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right, so what we saw last week is that Jesus, like rabbis did, gave his disciples a pattern of prayer. Like not some words just re repeat, but like a pattern. A process to go through, what the priorities are. And what we saw is if you skip, if you, if you don't get those priorities in their right order, you will pray amiss. For example, if you start with you, how what a terrible sinner you are. Instead of starting with God, there's going to be no power to change. You're just cursing you. Uh, if you start with your problems, just, oh my gosh, this situation, that situation. You're just magnifying the issue. There's not going to be any faith. To bring the change. So Jesus said start with praise. Father in heaven. Holy is your name. And then confidence comes to see the breakthrough. In your own life. In your circumstances. Through God. Who is our father. We begin with praise. But. And really this is what I want us to get hold of. Like in terms of the goal of prayer. Like we don't just get the praise done so we can get onto the main meal, which is answered prayer, like our stuff. Like I, it's not like that. Otherwise, we'll be like some rogue man chatting up a woman on the street like, yeah, honey, you're so pretty. Love your top. Because we just want to say that so we get what we want. Right. Like that's ugly. That's bad. It's manipulation. It's just wrong on so many levels. But I think. Not necessarily meaning to, even in our church, sometimes in the way we talk about prayer, the testimonies and stories that we give, we make it sound like answered prayer is the goal. Like, you're probably thinking of all those blank check promises that are there in the Bible, right? Like, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Whatever you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. Well, that's, uh, that's the Psalms, that's John chapter 14, uh, Mark's gospel. I think I quoted this last week. I think it's chapter 11 where, you know, Jesus says, look, whatever you ask, believing in faith, it will be given to you. And so we tend to emphasize whatever you want, desires of your heart, whatever you ask, the blank check part of the prayer. But we miss the context of all these prayers all these promises is relationship, is intimacy, is heart connection. That's the goal. The goal is love, is knowing Father. That's the first word in this prayer of Jesus. It's relational. 
It's Father. Delight yourself in the Lord. It's that when you're in that place of delight, anything's possible. Whatever you ask in my name, John 14, in my name, that's like marriage. Nicola, she can have whatever she wants. She already got it. Like she have whatever she wants because she's in my name. When we got married, she took my name. What's mine is hers. It's, it's that sharing. It's, and, and really the goal is not like I'm married so I'd get her stuff or she married so I'd get, she'd get my stuff. I didn't have much stuff. But it, it wasn't this kind of manipulative I married to get. It's all about the relationship. And whatever getting is, is really a gift giving, enjoying the relationship. The goal of prayer isn't answers to prayer. The goal is relationship. And many of us as Christians have fallen away from prayer because we saw answers as the chief aim of prayer. I had an amazing testimony this week. Brilliant testimony uh, from this guy, a Christian. Uh, I said, how did you become a Christian? He said, well, um, I used to run with gangs, a lot of crime. I got arrested and I was up for sentencing. And I was about to find out, am I going to go to prison? I'm going to do jail time or not? And, and so like first time in my life, I prayed. I cried out to God, don't let me go to prison. And I said, so what happened with the sentencing? And he said, well, they sent me to prison. And he said, but there was another opportunity. So I prayed again that I wouldn't go to prison. Uh, and the appeal failed. I said, so then what happens? He said, well, then there was a third opportunity. So I prayed again. I said, what happened? He said, I went to prison. I did my time. And I'm like, what? He said, that's not the testimony. The testimony is that as I began to pray, I got to know God. And I became a Christian. And I began to, he began to communicate with me. I realized like, actually he was doing a deep work in my heart of understanding consequence and accountability. And so he came to know God when his prayer was not answered. Like, so when we, when we go after answers as the main goal of prayer, we set ourselves up for disappointment. It's about knowing God and loving and being loved by God. And so I just want to have another little comment on that about the worship aspect, about desiring God. Like, the only way I think I can explain to you what I want to communicate now is through the metaphor of marriage or, or my experience of marriage. Like, I desire Nicola, my wife. I think she's pretty, I, you know, and I tell her, like, I, I praise her. You know, like, oh, I love your ears. I love the shape of your ears. I love your hair or, or, or whatever. I love your character. I love how you listen. You're so kind. And I will praise her. Like, it's just, I'm a praiser. Like, I'll tell her that. Um... And I want her, like, and I don't just mean romantically, but like, I, I love her attention. You know, she's a great coach. I love it when she's, she asks questions. I get to share all my stuff and she helps me think stuff through. And, and so I desire her and I praise her. But what I'm realizing is that actually that's really just a big, it's a good thing to desire your wife, right? But it's just the beginning. Mature love is not about me desiring her because I value her for what she can do for me. M mature love is because I value and, and care for her. Now I want to take all I am and see how I can serve and bless her. There's a switch that goes on. And actually, I'm discovering that's the most fulfilling place of marriage. It's what Paul taught. It's more blessed. It's more fulfilling to give than to receive. It's more fulfilling to, to give than to receive. In fact, it's a beautiful place and you discover it as a parent where actually in your receiving, that too is giving because you look at the delight it gives them to give to you. And, and my point is, this is where God wants to bring us in prayer. We, we start off, we're worshiping, we're praising the Lord. We're like, our Father, your name is holy, you're wonderful. We're, we're on this discovering journey of how good he is. And, and then the next thing is your kingdom, your will, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, as in heaven. And actually, this is the place of significant, sweet fulfillment where, where suddenly we're like, oh, OK, I've caught his heart. Oh, this is going to bless him. And, and it becomes exciting to us. And like if that's the goal, you'll never be disappointed. Now, God doesn't leave us there and like there's something about the relationship he loves to bring it on to what do you want? How can I bless you? And, and it's, it's again, it's part of how 
uh, we, we bless him is by allowing him to bless us. It's this, this rhythm. We don't shortcut, and I say it again, we don't shortcut to our requests because the main goal of prayer is not answered prayer. It's the relationship. It's the love connection. Now, what I want us to look at today is that the, the way we enjoy that love connection, initially the way it begins is this posture of listening. Like if I, I, mean, I want to love on Nicola, I have to listen. You know, what is it she wants? What is it she needs? And, 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 I, and the best way to do this is simply is to ask, you know, what is your kingdom? What is your will? What is it you want? Now with God, we've got a whole book that expresses his desires, his will, his heart. And I, I want to say to you this, like, if you want to go deep in knowing the heart of God, get to know his letters, his, his love letters, his book, his story, his journey. Discover him. Now, like, we're going to have a whole series on looking at Scripture and what it means to have a devotional life around Scripture. Um, but really what I want to say to you very simply is let your life come under the weight of the Word. Like, it's not about getting one or two verses that you can sort of hit your problems with to get your problems fixed. Like a verse on healing or a verse on, you know, provision and bang, try and deal with the problem. It, actually, it's about letting the weight of the word sit on you and form you so that God can work through you. I was struggling with sexual sin uh, or, or sexual thoughts, really. Not so much acting out on it, but like just these thoughts just kept coming and coming and coming. I said, God, I can't. This wasn't that long ago. And it was like, God, I was like, God, I can't really deal with this. And the Lord said to me, increase your time in my word. Increase your time in scripture. Psalm 119 actually says, like, how can a man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. Now, I know that means applying the word, but God was just saying to me, just listen to it. Just listen to the scripture. And there's something about that displacement. Like you, you let the majority of your thoughts be hearing the word. It displaces a lot of the other thoughts that pop across our mind and across our imagination. And so I want to encourage you, be formed by the weight of the word. Now, uh, I will say this, it's not enough to read the scripture, reading the scripture, I'd even go so far to say this isn't prayer. It's not prayer to read your Bible. Uh, Jesus said to the Pharisees, like, you come, to the, you come to the scriptures, but you don't come to me. Now, you can pray through the word. You can be like reading a verse at a time, talking to God about it. You can do that. That's fine. But the way I see reading the word is it's the fuel that fuels prayer. When you've been listening to scripture or reading scripture, it gives you an authority and confidence when you pray, that you're praying the way that God thinks. But, but more importantly, this is the main thing. Prayer is this relationship with the Holy Spirit. You're talking to him, he's talking to you. And the Spirit of God is unlikely to remind you of a scripture you've never read. Like it, it's it, like, for example, like if, if you're not an aviarist or whatever, so a, a, whatever the word is, ornithologist, if you're not an ornithologist, God's probably unlikely to use the language of birds and the Latin and Greek for birds with you because you never studied that. He's not going to use that. And if you've not studied the scripture, if you've not read the scripture, he can't remind you of a scripture when you're praying because you never read the thing or he's unlikely to. He's unlikely to. And when you read the testimonies of men and women in history, when they've seen real breakthrough and transformation, often it's because they've been in the place of prayer. They've been worshipping. And then his will comes in the form of a scripture. Now, like I'm not talking about you just picking a scripture out and saying, this is the one I choose. I'm going to bat this problem with it. Although you can do that. That's not illegitimate. It is the word of God. But it's so much more powerful when in relationship the Spirit of God drops in your mind a scripture. John Alexander Dowie, the, the founder of the, the, the healing movement, really, like this is late 1800s, before it was like everyone was praying for everyone to get healed. It, it, I mean, I know healing's been happening through centuries, but it was a real revival of healing that happened for him. But the context was horrible. Like he'd seen something like 200 people in his church die of this sickness that was spreading in Australia at the time, like a kind of plague type thing, I guess. I don't know. I can't remember what the actual illness was. And he was praying and praying and praying over each one. And 
They were all dying. And one time he was just in secret place with God. And this scripture dropped into his spirit. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Which speaks about Jesus anointed with God and the Holy Spirit. Went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. He was like, oh, God wants to heal all. This sickness isn't God. This isn't God's will. This is demonic. And he went from that revelation where the Holy Spirit had spoken in the context of prayer. The next person he prayed for got healed. It was the end of the plague breaking out in his church. Um, And he went on to have an amazing healing ministry. And there are just so many stories of people like that who've had a word from God. The the revival that happened in the Hebrides. They they got this verse from Isaiah. God's going to pour out rain on the, the thirsty ground. It became this metaphor of the outpouring of the Spirit. And after they heard the promise, they prayed the promise, it happened. And we take back to God what we first heard from God. And so the Scriptures fuel that relationship. The Holy Spirit unlikely to remind you of a Scripture you've never read before. And so I want to encourage you. First question that we're going to look at at the end of today is, How are you going to prioritize the reading or listening of scripture in your life? You're going to play it in the car. Like I read and run. I run, listen to the scriptures. I much prefer listening to it. I know some of you like to go into the Hebrew and the Greek and you you spend time on one verse. And that's not, that's good. That's really legitimate to do that. But don't substitute that for getting the big themes and listening to chunks of it. And allowing it not just to affect your mind, but your soul as you hear the character of God. And it influences your prayer. Reading scripture fuels prayer, gives us confidence and authority. But the main thing is it builds this platform for connection with the Holy Spirit, for connection with God. And that's the goal. And and this is really what I want to land with. We talked about this in church, uh, face-to-face church in the afternoon last week. Like, what does connection with God look like for you? Because the whole goal of this thing is, is knowing him, right? Like, that's the goal. And, and anyone who's had a, 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 an intimate journey with God over time, we, you learn to recognize these moments when, like, okay, I'm not just praying at God now. I'm not just praying to God, but I'm praying with God. And, and you experience connection. And we shared about that on, on Sunday. And some said, you know what? The way I experience connection, suddenly like this, this peace comes in the room. Or, or I experience connection because like a thought comes that completely cuts across what I was thinking. Samuel, you know, like he's a gung-ho evangelist. We've got to get on the streets. We've got to be preaching the gospel. We've got to be telling people about Jesus. He was telling me on Thursday, he's like, he said, yeah, I was praying this morning and this thought came. And the thought was rest and pray. Can that be God? Like this is the day I'm going out on the streets. That can't be God, right? And I said, well, Sam, like, these thoughts, they come from one of three places. Could be God, could be the devil, could be you. Well, I know you're an evangelist. You want to be out there on the streets. It's not you saying stay home and pray. Um, Would the devil encourage you to rest and pray? Mm, I don't think so. I think it's God. And bless Sam, like, he was obedient. Stayed home, sought the Lord, prayed. And and it's when these thoughts come that kind of, Cut across what we naturally think. Sometimes we recognize, ah, that's God. Sometimes it's a scripture comes. Um, Sometimes strong emotion. You know, like, could be joy. That's just like, oh, I don't know. I just feel so happy now. Sometimes tears. Um, But it can be different in different ways. It's like trying to describe the mystery of marriage romance. You know, the mystery of how to connect with a woman emotionally. Like, It's difficult to put words to it, but when you've had a long relationship, you start to recognize what it means to really connect heart to heart. And and this might sound vague and mysterious to you, but I want to encourage you. When you go into prayer, look for the moment of connection. Praising God, thinking about him will lead you there. But it's this, this humble posture of your kingdom. Your will be done. What is it? This posture of listening that positions you to really connect and know the heart of God. If I want to know what Nicola wants, Nicola needs, I ask and I listen. 
Now we're going to have like a whole teaching series on looking at scripture devotionally. We're going to have another series on listening to God because there are some detailed ways uh, that we can do that, learn how to recognize his voice. But what I want to leave you with today is some, is some real questions to help ground this, that you can ask your prayer partner and, and talk about this, have conversation around this. First question is really about how you're going to integrate Bible as the fuel towards your prayer life. Is it going to be like verse of the day and the chapter around it? Is it going to be like uh, Bible in the year reading plan? Have conversation around that. Um, the second thing I really want you to have a conversation with is, is what connection with God looks like for you. And it's okay to say to your prayer partner, look, I don't know. I don't even know what he's talking about there. But have a conversation because there are depths of knowing God that are available. Have conversation around what connection looks like for you. And then the third thing I want you to talk about is what it looks like for you to, to hear God during prayer. Like years ago, what I used to do is I'd literally, I'd do all my requests and then I'd just stop and be like, okay, God, what do you want to say? And I'd give him like five minutes. And then if I, if I heard something, great. If I didn't, you know, now I'm more like to actually get a pen and paper out, you know, to be writing stuff down, asking questions, writing, start with worship, move on to journaling. How do you make time to listen to God? And then the last question, I just want you to ask each other, what have you heard this week from God? And, and so there's some questions. I'm going to bring them up on the screen now. I want you to think about them now. Um, but meet with your prayer partner. Call your prayer partner this week and ask these questions of one another. All right, let's take a minute to think about this. All right, well, I think it's appropriate for us today to pray. Uh, I'm going to pray. I want you to pray with me at home uh, for King Charles. Uh, let's pray for King Charles III. Uh, let's pray that he'd know the Lord. He'd know a strong prayer life. He'd have like people like Queen Elizabeth. She had Billy Graham come and show how to be born again. Let's pray for this godly influence in his life uh, and pray a blessing on him. Father God, we, we give thanks for Queen Elizabeth and, and her life and her testimony uh, before you as a woman of faith, a woman of prayer, a woman of confidence in Jesus who was born again, encouraged others to be born again. Uh, and Lord, it's true what the pundits are saying. These are big shoes to fill. But we pray for King Charles III. We pray, God, that he'd open his heart to know you, to know you in prayer, to know you in the secret place. Lord God, let every ungodly influence be cut off from his life, Jesus. And may his ears be open to hear you. God, provide godly counsel, godly wisdom, godly friends that will advise him and lead him in the way everlasting. Uh, and God, let him become a light uh, and let him yield to you. We pray this. And Father, I pray for everyone listening that God, we know the joy of intimacy with you, God. Not just getting our prayers answered, but knowing you. Knowing you in the secret place. Knowing conversation with you. Knowing your love and your blessing. And Lord, learning the joy of loving you back by listening to obey the words that come from your heart. In Jesus' name. God bless you, church. Have an amazing week. You are so, so loved.